Hey everybody. It's been a long time since I've sat down in a restaurant to have food. And usually when I do, I'm alone. And then I'm not with a party. Today, there's a pizza place in my neighborhood. It's really nice slices. <laughs> and they're cheap. So I went in there to have one and there were a couple of families in there eating together. I've often spoken at length about how our species is fundamentally social. We form teams and pods very naturally, unless the contexts that we're enmeshed in prohibit or counterfeit this, in which case we form things like nations, corporations, sports teams military units, and so on. And these are all representations of something far more natural to us, which you can see children doing completely organically when they're left, you know, to their own, to their own lights. And it's a terrible tragedy that most of us in our lives we'll have few opportunities to deeply belong and participate to pods, with pods, belong in and participate with. And it seems one of the great deprivations of our time to me. And when I was in the, uh, the restaurant this afternoon and I saw the families together, one of them was very small, they were just, you know, um, an elderly couple and their son who's near my age but looks much older because I look extremely young <laughs> for my age. Um, and the other was more extended. There were you know, a few children, various adults, didn't seem to be any elders. And I felt very strong emotions. Not uncommon for me. <laughs> Though I may appear stoic, I am anything but stoic. <laughs> These little birds here with bright red heads, they're beautiful. They're also pod animals. They form extremely sophisticated, tightly knit social and adventuring groups. And that's a really good thing to do because it protects you from threats in ways that are impossible to achieve with one or two animals. And it also grants you benefits of distributed situational awareness that allows you to uh, allows you to capitalize on opportunities that otherwise you would not detect, let alone capitalize on. And similarly with threats, you can deal with threats that would otherwise be impossible for you to detect or to respond to quickly enough when you have multi-sensing, right? The sensing of a, of a pod. It's a beautiful Cooper's Hawk up here. I don't know if I can point the camera directly at it. It's one of its favorite perches. Oh, and there's uh, another one of my one of my friends. I'm surprised he's being so bold in the presence of the hawk. Let's see what's going on here. 
What's up? What's up, buddy? <laughs> and there's the there's his mate up there, Ladybird. So when we have groups like this, very tightly knit, in which each, each individual has a unique role, and this is why we make up things like nicknames, right? We'll call like the names of the seven dwarves, or we'll, we'll make up nicknames for people that we're close to. Um, when I was a kid, uh, people used to call me Durwood sometimes <laughs> because of the television show Bewitched. My name is Darren, right? And the rather ridiculously ignorant hug husband of the witch in Bewitched was named Darren. And her, his mother-in-law, uh, Endora, despised him pretty much and used to always call him Durwood. <laughs> And other people called me the scientist. Um, and there were some glosses on my last name as well. And most of the time these nicknames in a, you know, in an um, adaptive, positive pod, these nicknames are sort of badges of belonging, but also of honor. In any case, I was in the restaurant earlier and I suddenly realized how incredibly important it is that we dine communally as human beings, that we eat together. And a restaurant is a pretty crummy context for this sort of thing. And then I also realized how uncommon it's been in my life, particularly in the last few decades that there was any dining together at all. And I felt in the restaurant watching the families being together and talking together and eating together, I felt an incredible poignancy. And there was some sadness, you know, there was a, an aura of sadness in that poignancy at what I had missed and have missed and will miss. There was also just this recognition of how profoundly important it is for us as human beings to, to eat food together, to be together when we awaken in the middle of the day, in the evening, at night, to be together eat together, to live together, to go together into the world with and for each other. A human family is a brocade of lineages, invisible to our common thought, absolutely present in our bodies and souls, in our minds. My son, for example, looks almost exactly like my great-grandfather who I never met. And if we could see into time, we would see that this coming together at the, at the communal table was not merely a coming together of the people who are alive now, but a coming together of impossibly beautiful, ornately sophisticated lineages of beings, and not merely the beings in our own family line. So these things were on my mind today. Not so much while I was in the restaurant, I was feeling these things in the restaurant. And of course I was hungry and I had my slice of pizza and such. And um, so I was a little distracted, but later as I you know, began to walk in, in the living places that are my hope and heart, I was reflecting 
on the feelings I had in the restaurant and how powerful they were and how important they were to recognize and admit to my awareness and consciousness and then also you know the sorrow of not having the experience of eating with other people that I love and am loved by and not just eating but of course making food together making homes together living lives together all of these things but perhaps especially eating you know we need the restaurant is not so good because our bodies need to be exposed to not merely the sense of the food cooking because that primes our microbiota our microbiome our digestive system and all of these things they it's primed by the sense of cooking food so that when you smell the food cooking for like an hour or two hours or something then when you finally eat it your body is so prepared um, that it's much easier and healthier for you to digest the food and this is very important and something that's often overlooked in our um, our habits of instantaneous gratification of urges, right? You want some food, you go to the restaurant, you, or, you order the food ahead of time. You get to the restaurant, you eat the food, you leave. You're not smelling it being prepared, there's no ritual. But also it's the music of familiar voices during the preparation of the food. It's not just the sense of the food, or handling the food, or selecting the food, or all of these things. The rituals of food preparation are anciently embedded in our species. And when we reenact them, we're reenacting anciently diverse lineages, really old, complex, sophisticated, magical lineages of time and companioning and mutual concern and awareness, care, humor, play, and also conflict. So these things were on my mind this afternoon and I wanted to just uh, speak to them briefly today. I hope uh, some of you who may watch this will gain some benefit from it and also that you will be empowered and blessed with the opportunity to deeply participate in, with meaningful senses of role and identity in human pods that are not merely counterfeits. And that maybe we can all remember each other at mealtime and somehow be together, even if we're alone. Yeah? This is my hope. This is my hope. Thank you. All blessings to you. Bye-bye for now.